You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What's up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to another All Talk brought to you by Good Day Daily Multivitamins, the number one vi- multivitamin in town. Correct. Take care of your nutritional health today with Good Day Daily Multivitamins. Go to begoodhealth.com.au and you can get your supply there. Eddie, who are we talking to today? Today, Tom, we had the absolute pleasure of talking to two of Australia's, what, fighting royalty, I suppose you'd say. Danny Green, one of the great boxing names to ever come out of this nation, had one of the most storied rivals, rivalries in the history of Australian combat sport with the great Anthony Chuck Mundine. Former world champion. Wouldn't give us the information on how many pay-per-views they did back in, I think, 2006. Uh... I asked him and then realised, like, when his response was like, oh, maybe that's, like, a rude question. Yeah, but also tell me because I'm so yeah, I'm but like, so yeah, curious. Like, I was naive and I'm like, oi, like, so how many papers are you? He's like, no, nah, I'm not telling you that. And I'm like, well, okay, fine, that actually makes that's sense. That's really annoying, Denny Green, but one of the great Yarners. He's the holder of one, two, three pay-per-views all the time. Now, are we giving away, like, nice tidbits for the fucking interview? Probably nah, maybe, maybe not. The other one we interview sitting on the right of the great Denny Green was Tyson Pedro, recently retired from the UFC, now dipping in his toe back into the world of boxing. His first professional boxing bout coming up in June, I think June 12th. Tom. June 12th against Chris Terevsky. I think it's a name that's difficult to pronounce, but Tyson Pedro, Chris Terevsky, uh, June 12th. So he's coming back into the boxing ring. Tickets available right now from Ticketek. Go and check it out. Um, it was great to sit down and have a chat with him. A lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. You've got like the new and the old. Old and Danny new. Green promoter, Tyson Pedro, who's much more than just a fighter. He comes from, like, serious fighting stock. Australian, like, punching on royalty. And just a fucking great yarn. Yeah, good both, fellas. Both fellas are a, a, a yarnman going way back. Yeah, yeah. And respected fight royalty in this nation. So if you don't like that, you can fuck off. You can jam it. Respectfully, you can jam it. Danny Green, Tyson Pedro. Fellas, thank you very much for coming in. Obviously, uh, there's a big fight coming up. Uh, is it June 12th? Uh, where are we? Where's this fight going on? Horton Pavilion. Horton Pavilion. Now, I just want to, like, off the top here, I'm interested to know, firstly from you, Danny, how you're now a promoter. Like, the have you got more empathy now for promoters having uh, becoming one? Uh, or is it, like, do you sort of have the experience of a fighter? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you sort of still have that fighter's mentality, uh, or is it now you're like, Jesus Christ, promoting is, uh, is more well, difficult. We just had the press conference and I need a hug. <laughs> 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 but um, I've been promoting since 2002. So, my, a, a good friend of mine, um, Molly Justin Monolikos, um, formed Green Machine Promotions back in 2002 um, when I first turned pro. I've been pro for about a year, and mm. we, we put a show on in Perth uh, and got some people that I knew, and uh, he was my, he's my, one of my best mates, mm. and still is. And we sold out the stadium at Challenge Stadium there, and from then we never looked back. We did 28 um, stadium shows. And okay, so you've been the, promoting through your whole career. Yeah. I had no idea about that. If what? you ask my trainer, Angela, he'll go, the bloke's men, he's, he's really, really, you know, uh, tapped. Because mm. the pressure I put myself under for being the promoter and the main event fighter is it was literally insurmountable it's crazy so yeah. now now i'm just the promoter yeah so you're yeah, always it's, like, it's easier. easier what yeah. do you forgive me but like what does promotion involve like what is there that you have to do that people just wouldn't fucking know about uh, message me all day <laughs> <laughs> i just say hey, we've already just begun <laughs> you're gonna be screening my calls oh look from dealing with the broadcast um, station, so yeah. putting together a pay per view deal, then putting together fighters and dealing with managers and fighters promoters and fighters managers and dealing with fighters, dealing with the venue, dealing with insurance, dealing with everything down to the napkins that go on a table in the venue. Jesus, um, Christ. you know, and then into uh, the fighters and into doctors, insurance. Uh, Oh, the, I couldn't even begin to tell you then press conferences and weigh-ins and, 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 and signage and then sponsorships and dealing with the – and I'm just starting to begin. I'm just scratching the surface of what goes on. So probably to give you an indication, I'm not exaggerating, and my daughter over there, Chloe, can attest if I'm calling this exaggerated, 
I've been on the phone for the last three weeks and it'll be on an average like yesterday I was on the phone and computer for would have been a minimum of 18, 17 hours. Jeez. 17 hours. So I got six hours sleep and then I maybe had an hour off the computer and the phone in that entire day from 6.30 till 12.30 last night and the day before that and the weeks leading into that have not changed much. Would be 14 to 18 hours on the da- on the phone and the computer on average for the last three weeks and then before that it's, you know. Would the uh, would would people say who knew you before you got into promotion? Like, is this a a natural progression? That something that you were always did? You have a business mind that also went with the fighters in sort of mindset. Have you always had that? Uh, I've been involved in in other businesses, so you know, formed gymnasiums and did yeah. my own gyms and and got a franchise that's around the world in gymnasiums Do you? and yeah, and called cool Ubox and that's in ah. founded it in Florida. So I'm a co-founder and director, and we were in um, United States, just up in in Larchmont, New York, and it's been the strongest form of gym we got. We're in UK, Ireland, Japan, New Zealand, Singapore, around Australia, blah blah. So Jesus yeah, I've been I've been and and had other businesses that have had gymnasiums in Perth, large big box gyms that I've you know founded and then formed ran and then sold and so uh oh, people who know me though who know me well mm. would go he, he he's he's tripping that bloke <laughs> the most unorganized <laughs> and the busiest man without a job title i know he, he doesn't know whether he's you know coming or going but sometimes uh, somehow shit just comes together that's wild i didn't uh it's a, and as a, i wasn't lying when i said before like we like to not do a shitload of research in terms of like you mm. get a you get a bit of an understanding of some things but like Largely, you know, we, I mean, I had no clue at all that you had gyms around the world. That's how long have you, how long have you had that for? Uh, f- founded it. We found I found it in 2014. Then we opened our first concept store. <clears throat> I put my first one in my gym back in Perth that I sold called Green Zone Fitness, like ZONE Green Zones, different zones of, of different um, workout areas. Mm. And we put the first concept there. It was boxing and strength training all combined into three minute rounds and one minute rest and no 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 lock in times. And then it went really well. So we opened the first store with my partners over in Brisbane, where they're based. And then um, from there, that took off and we sold our first franchise in 2016 and we got 77 around the country and we had more because COVID kicked us in the ass a bit. Mm. And then we've got, we're the, we're the um, largest boxing provider uh, in the world at the moment. And oh. we're kind of a secret, but I won't go too much into that. Yeah, yeah. But um, going back into the promoter's side of things, um, the stress that it can live, it can give a fighter or a promoter. But I was, when I fought Roy Jones Jr., I had to remortgage my house I went to went inside to the missus on the phone up. I was on the wall because it was like early in the morning. I couldn't get reception. I was up on the wall on the phone to the other guy's promoter, doing it's kind of crunching the deal. And then my Angelo Hyder, who was my trainer and matchmaker, mm. he set it up. And then I went and did the, the kind of the, 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 the not the gritty stuff, but the details. Mm. And then handed it over to my guy Justin, who took care of everything. But um, I kind of did the, the main part of the deal, Sorry. and I had to remortgage my home. Went and said, "Hey, love." <laughs> to make this happen, I've got to put two and a half million US in a bank account eight weeks out and escrow to this guy's account, this lawyer's account, if we're going to make this happen, just to guarantee we could get Roy to come out here because yeah. he wasn't sure, you know, thought these mm. are these Aussies. Mm. And um, she said, no worries, no problem at all. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the. Yeah. And then the pressure that you face when that's on, when your house is mm. on the line, if the fight doesn't sell, yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's high pressure. Oh, mate. So you're you really rolling the dots. You're burning the boats, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> hey? You're burning the boats. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 big time. How was. How was that lead up to the fight then for you, knowing that you got two and a half million in escrow, you're fighting Roy Jones Jr., you fucking, you know, got dead up to the eyeballs. Did that change that whole process for you or just go about business as usual? Uh, it was the best fight of my life. It was the best preparation of my life. I've never felt better, never trained better, never prepared better. Purely, there's, I mean, there's a lot of luck involved in that stuff with injuries and stuff. Mm. You know, <clears throat> he'll, be, he'll get into that. Mm. And so, yeah, it was the, I never felt better. And then, to be fair, it was a pretty big deal getting Roy Jones in Australia. Yeah, and then when we, when we put the press comments on, it went gangbusters. And then the first day ticket sales went and through the like, went bonkers. So I was like, okay, <sighs> that's eased my mind. Thank <laughs> God. And then it ended up becoming the second highest pay per view in Australian boxing history. So it was, it was, yeah. you know, and you sparked I, him. Yeah, and <clears throat> got the got the job done, mm. which is forget the money. Would have done, yeah. You know, would have done if I broke even. I would have been happy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would have done it if I lost a bit of cash. You know, it was like a dream come true. So yeah, it. Promoting can be can be very stressful, and every promoter that you will speak to will say the same. So, have you got number one and number two pay per views in number three. And, and number, number three. three. So, so what? You and Shock twice. And number and one. Yeah. That will never get touched. Never. What Not in our do? lifetime. Sorry, the first one or the second one. First one will never get touched. Yeah. Yeah. Really. The systems broke down the afternoon of the fight, which is the number one time when people press the button to buy the pay per view for like three or four hours. Yep. They couldn't cope with it. The systems shut oh, down. Yeah. They were unprepared, and so we lost millions of dollars 
And so um, it would have been even bigger. And the, the numbers, not many people would know the real number, and people wouldn't believe it if it was, but the real number really? would never be touched in our lifetime. Oh, shit. Number two was myself and Roy. Number three was myself and Chalk. They're the three highest grossing. The three pay biggest. Views. There you go. Yeah. So you're the, pa- you're the pay-per-view pay-per-view king. king. You're the Floyd Mayweather Chalk, of Australia. Chalk's the king. Chalk's, Chalk's done the most. He's, like done the most, he's done the most pay-per-views. Chock's the pay-per-view king without doubt. Mm-hmm. I've, been, he's, I've been in the top three. He's been in the top two. Yeah, okay. So you would say before in the green room, we like to call it, uh, which is a which TV term, <laughs> 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 that pay-per-views on Wednesday were sort of started by Chock when he moved them to a Wednesday to, to try and nail down the best time of the week. Can you elaborate a little bit on, more on that? Yeah, mate. Chock was the Chock's the pioneer of pay-per-view boxing in the country. Then I come along at a time when he was running hot, <clears throat> and you know it was super controversial and doing his thing. And then I come along and I I knocked out a guy that, and I was training with Jeff Fennick. back then. He was my trainer. So Jeff was you know Jeff's pretty pretty uh, outspoken, and so uh, I was knocking a few guys out that you know he'd fought and went the distance with, and I knocked him out in one or two rounds. And the the commentator said, Dave, what about this Danny Green bloke? And Chuck goes, yeah, I'll knock that bum out. <laughs> Just off the cuff. Didn't even know me. Mm. I don't take it personally. So the next time I fought, they asked me, what about my best? Yeah, I'll fight the guy. Let's get on. And the media ran with it. And and that's and they ran with it. Yeah. And so, you know, and then Chuck called me the corporate white guy. I'm a carpenter by trade. You never had a job in your life. <laughs> you, walked out, you walked out, you know, you walked out of, out of school into a 250K a year contract and playing rugby league. Uh, yeah. So it all was, and the media ran with it. And our, our, our you know, our rivalry was crazy. But yeah, go back to it. Chuck, um, was the guy who, who was doing pay-per-views on a Monday night and then he went to a Wednesday and that's where it stuck. And people would assume you have a pay-per-view on a, a Friday or a Saturday night because it makes sense. But as we spoke about before, a lot of people are doing stuff for their family on that night or mm. doing stuff with their friends and doing going away or whatever it is. Wednesday night, people are home. They've got nothing else to do generally. Not nothing, but they're, they're generally home. That's when they're going to pick it up and potentially buy that fight mm. and, and be entertained. So that's Chock's legacy, the Wednesday night pay-per-view. There you go. Yeah. Now I want to obviously I don't want you sitting there saying nothing. I'm conscious. <laughs> no, yeah. you're good. Bro. But um, I was glad you asked. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Like, hey, I was gonna have a nap and come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But so you've obviously just recently retired from uh, from MMA and UFC. Was that always on? Was it was it like a, if I don't win this fight, I'm going to retire? Were you already feeling like retirement anyway? I know you had a you had a wretched run of injuries sort of through that mid period. Yeah. So I haven't even really like explained what happened with the UFC, uh, but. After the Sydney fight, I like normally visualize or like I can see what I'm doing goal wise with the fighting, and mm. I just couldn't see it after the UFC. It was like that was the biggest like the moment, I guess, for mm. the celebration to the home crowd to everything in Sydney. I was like, um, the only thing that beats that would have been a title fight, really, for yeah. me in that position. So afterwards, I couldn't see it, and then um, I asked UFC for a release because I just wanted to be home with my uh, baby. Like I've been away for twelve months, the last mm. two and a half years. Uh, just in fight camp so I was like uh, and then they were like all right well you're doing a fight this monster in three weeks <laughs> <laughs> on three weeks notice so I was like yep and so um I then afterwards we've spoken to Danny and yeah it's moved pretty fast eh? yeah seriously <laughs> yeah so there was uh, always so the the boxing thing only really came to after retiring retiring from the UFC or was it yeah. always was well it I, I knew I would have but I was gonna have to have fights here so like if I, uh, like I just knew that I wasn't finished fighting okay right so I knew there was gonna be something home but it just uh, all aligned when we met with Danny and yeah, it's just moved a lot faster than I would have assumed. Yeah. So uh, we never stopped training and then, uh, um, yeah, we... Uh, went turbo. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, it went fast. And you had a box, a junior boxing career, right? You were yeah. the New South Wales amateur champion or yeah, something? Intermediate, yeah, intermediate. So yeah, it was 5-0. Yeah, right. And uh, I always loved boxing. I grew up with boxing. like mm. um, I would, But um, my dad obviously ran cage fighting. Yes. The pioneer of yeah. cage fighting. And uh, I think, uh, you know, as a kid, you sort of want to impress your dad, so... Ended up going to like the top of the world. I know. <laughs> trying, to, yeah, yeah. trying to impress my dad. You, ha- you love me now? Yeah. <laughs> He's actually yeah. left, so he doesn't Are give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then uh, I, so I, was, I was going the right direction, but I think it was just a couple of degrees off. And now that I'm doing this, it's all happened how it was supposed to. Yeah. But uh, I feel a real sense of purpose. And uh, what we're about to do is looks crazy to everyone else, but I've got a belief in myself and uh, I'm going to shock everyone. Yeah, right. And so uh, what's the name of the, the bloke you're fighting? Chris Terzie to Terzievsky. 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 It's a it's a silent V. Is Terzievsky. he? And now just uh, this is just I might be. He has he's he guy that fought Gallon the Terzievsky guy. Correct. Dominated him. Yeah. We saw that we were at that fight at the Newcastle uh, the shed out there. Oh yeah, the uh, Newcastle Entertainment Centre. Yeah. 
I mean, he fucked up Gal, didn't he? Yeah, like, yeah, at the end. At the end. But I thought no, no, the, at the no, beginning, Gal sorry, came beginning, back at the end Gal, and yeah. it was like... He That's right, got, he, he did come back yeah, at yeah. the end. And then it was actually got to a point where I thought he was going to win. Yeah. Gal. Yes. He was all over him in those later yeah, rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But otherwise, for the, for most of the fight, yeah. he was... He had Gal pretty sort of yeah. tied up. Yeah. There you go. So, Chris, the big fella. That's a, And as we said, that's a, the 12th of June. So... Is there anything particularly about him that, say, like, fight fans who, or people who don't know fighting, like, what's his style like? I mean, he's super athletic. He's, like, a, uh, he's impressive, like, his speed. He's got a lot of good attributes, but I just don't see a fighter, you know? He's, like, an athlete. Mm. But, mm. Uh, and I felt that when we were standing across from each other. So uh, I think I'm going to bring the fight to him. That's the difference. Yeah. Is this an eliminator fight? Uh, we're fighting for the WBC international title. Okay. So it's okay. a title fight. Mauricio Suleiman loves this bloke, and Mauricio Suleiman is the president of the WBC. His father, Jose Suleiman, is the founder. Right. So I was a, I was a WBC champion, and <clears throat> we've got a good relationship with him. But Mauricio was a fan of Tyson's, um, you know, watching him throughout his career, and the idea of this guy coming across to boxing and representing the WBC and potentially one day in this crazy dream becoming a WBC champion yeah. really appealed to him. He's loved the idea. He loves ideas that make sense, and this mm. one makes sense because. Bring it across a different audience for the UFC. So this guy's not coming to boxing; he's coming back to boxing. Yeah, and he's coming to boxing to do it authentically. And the challenge he's chosen in Chris Terzieski, he won that. I was like, "What's fucking wrong with you?" <laughs> was, you know, you could have fought a fought a way. But if I if I fought fight. someone easy, would you respect me when I'm coming over to boxing? You know, yeah, you no, get those fights. You know, yeah. like I come over and I'm going, I'm coming over to boxing, guys. This guy I'm fighting has a former regular seventeen league player. three losses, yeah. Yeah. And zero wins. You know, so I was like. Fuck, I well, not even, it not even, not even that. Like I was like, let's get you guys, <laughs> let's get you guys even, at least even. <laughs> let's evenly match. Let's yeah, even yeah. up. Like he's, you know, take it on. Like it's a, it's a crazy challenge, and I think it's going to absolutely, absolutely legitimise him mm. overnight in the sport of boxing in this country and around the world. People go, far out, you serious? This guy's now ranked. He wants his title. He wants his ranking. He wants that number five position in the WBC bridgeweight the division. The, the bridgeweight division is a fairly new division in boxing. It's in between cruiserweight and heavyweight. Right, so there's you know it's a big disparity, and and they, I wish there was when I was fighting because I was too small. I was I was you know I was tiny when I was fighting cruiserweight, but I couldn't make like heavyweight anymore. But anyway, this bridge weight division's open because it's not hasn't been around a long time. Okay, but there's a lot of stars that are coming from heavyweight down to it because okay. they realise, hey, I can I can't compete with these big guys like Joshua and mm. you know uh, Wilder and Fury and these monsters. Mm. I can come down this division; it makes more sense. Yeah, so there's an opportunity there. He wants a piece of it, so he's taking this guy and wants his title. And man, it's going to be—it's bonkers. And so, how do you hear? Like, once you've heard that Tyson's retiring, are you—is you, like, are you coming after him? How does that? How does the process get going? Uh, I, I had some uh, some inside mail that Tyson wanted to box. Right. So I reached out. We met up, and here we are. It's pretty simple as yeah, that, okay. and, you know. And 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 our uh, our vision was kind of aligned. We we had the same kind of goals in mind. We want to shake things up in a boxing in boxing australia and i've done a deal with stan sport so mm. part of it <clears throat> stan stan so agreed to sign with me as well because they see the value not the value well yeah they see the value they see the potential um in tyson pedro being mm. coming a commodity let's be honest tv don't love people they want them to make the money yes mm. they'll fall in love with them if they make the money yeah they'll mm. kick them to the fucking curb but they don't <laughs> but you know so they, they see the value in a guy like tyson pedro and they know my history. I launched Stan's first pay per view with Sonny Bill versus Barry Hall, mm. um, and so they, and it was a terrible fight, but for, for, for <laughs> great for Sonny. Sonny smoked him, um, but it was it was a good um, promotion wise, numbers wise, it did very well. So. Have you been with Stan since then? Because I just the I I saw something recently, like, and I think it was obviously when you're announcing this, whether Tyson was was with you, but I wasn't sure whether that was just the announcement of the fight or whether that was a specific announcement of you guys officially partnering with Stan. We just announced that Tyson was, was yeah was, that was the with that Green Machine promotion to yep. sign Tyson Pedro okay. to a boxing um, contract yeah and then today we announced that uh, it was with Stan as well so okay. the fight will be live on pay per view Stan pay per view I've got a deal with them yep um, that you know <coughs> includes this fella here so it's 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 very exciting but I think more important that this fight <coughs> Tyson said to me on the undercard if anyone's fighting on my undercard his undercard. They're going to challenge himself like I am, like mm. he is. You know, it's pretty. It's a pretty wild, a pretty wild thing he's trying to do, and so the undercard's going to match that because he wants to make sure, and I'm, and I, I do too. We don't want the bell to go and go. We know that. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's a bit of like the UFC in you? Like UFC cards are usually 
just stacked from top to bottom for the most part, yeah, right? Yeah. Like you sort of know who's yeah. you know who's fighting who. Whereas in boxing, sometimes yeah. it's like you're waiting for the main event. Yeah, it's and uh, like uh, not all boxing fights, but I think like we've gotten to a place where people are so scared to lose their zero that they're not taking like those hard fights. Mm. And I sort of like the the idea of coming in and just having a tough fight, you know, bringing it back and having a crack. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to show. I'm showing it with this fight, but I want everyone on that card. Like, don't yeah. ask to come fight on the card and, like, get a walkover or something. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. You want people to get their money's worth. Yeah, yeah. 100%. People are paying to watch for a good show. They want to see you having a crack. And yep. that's what I want to give them. Punters and dribblers, we are brought to you by Neds. Ew. They are the best betting platform. Ew. They are our dear friends. And they are big supporters of us here at Hello Sport, at About Even, at Shane Keith Productions. And they got away with a couple on the weekend. They saw Edward Simpson coming and they were shaking in their boots. God, I got close across the board. Almost had an immortal bet with Tommy Turbo just going short on two tries. We didn't score two tries. You know what I mean? Wasn't unders in the Canberra game. Kick out doesn't go over for the dogs. I'm tired as fuck. Jacob Host doesn't score two tries. Oh, I know, dude. You were so close in that bet. All you needed to happen was to Host to score two, two tries, tries. And he didn't. And he didn't score any. No. That was annoying. Yeah, that was close. Neds would have been like nervous. Oh, dude, that would have been so nervous. Even up to like the 79th minute, there was still a chance that Jacob Host scored two, two tries. tries. Even when he was off the field. I know. Was. There was such a chance that he just scored two tries. Yeah. You know? Yep, yep, yep. Now. The beauty of Ned's punters and dribblers is that, obviously, if you watch about even, you'll see all of our rugby league bets. But we also like to get some bets going, some civilian bets. Um, you can bait you if you if you're on Ned's app, you follow the profiles. You can follow our personal profiles. You can go and see absolutely everything we're getting on. You can follow along if you want to, or you can just see them and then you can bring it up to us in the street and tell well, us we're shit at punting. That's a great point. If you want to watch, if you want to follow our civvy bets. You're going to need to sign up to Neds and come follow us on our profiles. Yep. You're going to need to do that. Also, just ask around. People are making the move over to Neds and they're yep. loving every minute of loving it. Loving it. You can also get in our private chat group where we all share bets together. That's the about even chat group, the largest chat group on Neds that isn't an open one. Uh, the secret passcode is dribblers. So get in there as well. It's just fucking easy. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. How many rounds are you fighting? Ten. Ten rounds. Just straight into it. Sink or swim, brother. <laughs> Sink or swim. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell, you. Oh my God. Unbelievable. 30 minutes. Yeah. Jeez. It's just insane. Yeah, how's the, uh, how's the, the cardio? Yeah, Feeling really good. good? Yeah. Real good. For where I'm at, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And my body feels amazing not having to wrestle anymore. Yeah, must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling around Honestly, on the ground, I'm mate. not going to lie, the, the body feels amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All I have to make sure is these are good and yeah. we're, we're sweet. So, so yeah. you said before you like to sort of vision and plan and, and goal set. Mm. Uh, what's your, what are your goals for boxing? I got a, I got a line. I got a line of uh, like a, I can see the dream where it's going to. But at the moment, just Chris. One at a time. Yeah. Chris, yeah. Chris in front of me, that's the main focus. But I know the path that I want to take. I just got to connect the dots and I'm at dot one right now. And is it is it is that path include like names of other fighters you want? Or is it sort of like, is it a bit <laughs> so less it's a specific? Pathway. It's a pathway. Yeah. Which What was really cool and obviously the, I've got to win the fights. But Mauricio Suleiman getting on there, he was like, Tyson's fighting number five. That puts him at the number one spot. That puts me in title contention. You know what I mean? Mm. We're talking about Off very the short. Rip, like yeah, straight yeah. away. Yeah. We're talking very short time. But it's pretty cool to see, well, for me anyway, that um, how many people have just completely written me off. Like on social media, it's done. Like they're yeah, like, yeah. oh, easy lockout. And for me, that pumps me up because mm. I can't wait to be on the thing. <laughs> like <laughs> every one of you motherfucking keep that same energy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so. And as a promoter, I'm going, fuck. Right. <laughs> 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 like, and f uh, like what pumps me up is it's like people were giving that opinion on, no, because you know you couldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. You, like I believe in myself. I'm going to have a crack no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So when people try and bring you down, it sort of pumps me up more. Mm -hmm. So it's just very interesting how people, just because they wouldn't have a go, try and say that you wouldn't, you're not People, they love to shit on you having yeah. a crack, don't yeah. they? Or, or, like in anything. Tall poppy syndrome. Yeah. Mate, well, that's like Australia. That was founded yeah. on tall yeah. poppy syndrome. No, one, wasn't no it? one does what this bloke's done. Like, come, come on and going, right, I want that guy. Mm. He's got something that I need, that I need, that yeah. I want, and I want to take it. And I'm not going to take it the easy way. He's just going to go. He's, he's not going to go around the fence, or he's going to bolt, you know, bolt straight through it. Like it's pretty wild. It's pretty rad. Yeah. So as a promoter, that's exciting. Mm. 
It's very exciting. Does part of you wish he took like a plumber or something just to start? <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really, no. no. It, and and to be to be fair, to be honest, this bloke's um, got a lot of layers as a human being. I've witnessed him as a human being, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm proud to be you know promoting this bloke because I've seen him. He comes down to the level of the bloke who would be walking past him on the street that would think, "Wow, it's Tyson Pedro. I can't say nothing." Five minutes later, they're having a conversation and they're like their best friends. Mm. Mm. And he can talk to a CEO of a business that may not be the best bloke, but you know knows his way around the block. And so he can come up and down towards all people in all walks of life, but um, gravitates towards the underdog, which I do. I, I prefer the underdog. I prefer talking to people who are just fucking real. Mm. And uh, this bloke, I've seen it firsthand, and, and, he, and he, he just has a, a, a way with people. He's a way with um, you know identifying you know someone's quirkiness and tapping into it and then then making that person feel good about himself, mm. which is a special thing to do with oh, something like that. Really. Oh, that <laughs> was beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, wait till you see. Wait till you see if knocks you out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, so I wish. Come on, a, brother. He's got a he's got a he's got a lot of layers. And then then when I've gone and watched him spar. You know, he's cruisy, he's cool, he's mellow here, and he's a fucking affable guy and laid back and, you know, charismatic and cool. And, you know, some people say he's handsome. Um, but <laughs> I, um, and then you see him when he spars. I watched him spar a couple of times. And he paces the ring. And I walked in there, you know, kind of going, I hate to hear you going. But I didn't even bother saying hello because I could just smell like, don't come fucking near me. Because yeah. he's pacing the ring. It's like a lion in a cage. Yeah, right. And then I'm seeing this guy that's going to get in and spar with him. thinking, far out, man, you poor dude. And then I watch what happens. Like, wow. So there are definitely different sides this bloke. But when the when the bell goes or when it's time to go, mm. this guy fucking goes. Yeah. So who, where are you training at the moment? Mm. Just in Penrith at BroFit. Yeah. So hopefully we'll have a new gym set up, just a private gym to bring all the sparring partners down. Yep. So the next couple of weeks. And who's training you? We've got Jay, one of my trainers down there. Okay. Yeah. Probably not known, but he will be soon. Yeah. Um, so obviously, like, for those who don't fully understand your old man's, like, influence on mm. MMA in Australia, can you just give a little bit of background? Yeah, so he uh, brought King of the Cage, which was an American company over probably... I'm so terrible with years. I was just got. I'll be. I'll be making a guess, no, but it was that long time ago. Yeah, uh, fifty three years ago. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> no, he uh, um, brought it over, and since ever since a kid, I've been doing MMA, and you know, I was opening the cage door for these fighters. Dad made me look after the ring girls. So that was my job. So, thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dad. But uh, yeah, and. Uh, he had James Sahuna, he had um, me, Brad Morris, and Tony Bonella, all four of us out of Cranebrook, fought in the UFC. He had four fighters fight in the UFC, which crazy. is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And, um, but it's just been a wild ride. Like, uh, I, I've I walked out for James Tahuna for his last fight. He just walked out in my corner for my last fight. So, so what's it like growing up then in that sort of, like, I guess a full, like, MMA like a martial arts household not very nice yeah but that's what like yeah. what's the, are you how like yeah. how old are you when you have your first fight like uh, professional well not even professional like you know so we were doing uh kempo karate when i first started which was with weapons uh Fuck. so yeah that was like seven <laughs> what seven. sort of weapons are you like nunchucks uh, knives bow staffs uh an ace sticks um okay yeah. 47s <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah all types of weapons like i got my first live sword when i was 12 like that's that samurai thing the finish that i did at the end that was one yeah. of our carters that we used to do when we were kids yeah right so, yeah that was sick when you did that yeah i liked it i appreciate it <laughs> but uh yeah so like and were you, were you always was it was you wanted to be a fighter like that yeah was, just that knew it I, I was like went and did every sport i played state for volleyball and uh like um rugby league and ah. then volleyball yeah jesus pretty Christ. good tennis player too really uh, played clarinet piano my mum put me in <sighs> Dude, yeah. I wish I played piano. Can you still play? Tingle a little bit, ivories? yeah, a little bit. It was for a few years, but now it's too many punches to the head. Yeah, broken fingers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't look too yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You saw that, you yeah. saw that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. But, uh, yeah, and like when people were kicking around the footy when we were kids, we were, getting, we were choking each other out. So I've Excellent. only been knocked out twice, touch wood, both times by my dad. So oh. Both times by your dad. <laughs> <laughs> he likes that one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, my front teeth are fake, nose broken. That's all done. Is it? So, yeah. What sparring? Uh, yeah, you could call it that. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, one time, um, uh, it was actually when I told him that I wanted to box full time. I was skipping school. I uh, like pretty much every day I wanted to go to the Olympics, and he was like, "All right, you want to box? Let's go." And uh, we were sparring, and uh, it was the first time I like actually cracked him real hard. Mm. And I saw the only other person I've seen eyes glaze over like that was is Mark Hunt. 
And he was like, he had a fight coming up and he was like, I'm going to fucking kill you, Bobby. I was like, who's Bobby? <laughs> and I just started running around the ring and then he went, dink, dink. And then I just remember James Sahuna, Speedy, there was a bunch of guys in the gym uh, and everyone was pretending, I was coming to him, I was like, Please don't be in the gym. Please don't be in the gym. I look around and everyone's on the ropes pretending they can't see shit. <laughs> like just looking away. <laughs> and I like grabbed my teeth. I wasn't wearing a mouth guard. Oh. And, uh, I've, got, I've gone to get out. And he was like, where are you going? So it's like, there's still a minute left on the clock. And then he just made me punch him in the mouth for like a straight minute. Holy shit. And like he was trying to bite my hands like while I was punching him. So his face was all busted up. <laughs> And then, like, I remember, <laughs> I remember when he saw my teeth were knocked out. Like, after everything calmed down, he was like, "All right, come out the back." He was like, "All right, you've earned your shot." And I was like, "Bullshit! You're just scared. Mum's gonna get angry about my teeth." <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> but yeah, that was um, like, uh, yeah, we grew up pretty, pretty hard with like. So to say the bins got put out when he was <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. He spent the he spent the thirty seconds you had knocked out trying to think of how the fuck he can get out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trying to sneak yeah, out the army <laughs> crawl out of the ropes. So when he brought it over, MMA, was was that was no one doing it in Australia at the time? I think there was another show. There was like one or two, but it was just starting out. That we're, that was still going through the uh, process of getting the cage legalized in like certain states. Mm. And yeah. like you weren't allowed to have the cage up. So like dad was just making it up. Like uh, they said no cage. It was at the Penrith Pavilion. So dad just took the cage walls off and like had people with bumper pads around. So if anyone fell off, he was no. yeah, yeah, bumping oh my God. I remember I saw one of the worst knockouts I've ever seen. The guy went over and like his head went on the side of the ring and yeah, that wasn't the best one, but uh, uh, it, he made it happen. You yeah, know, loopholes, loopholes, loopholes. Are you not going to sanction us? Well, fuck it. We'll get up there with, with pads. Unbelievable. Yeah. When so how many how many fights did you have back in those early days? Do you uh, think? Lots of like jujitsu and karate fights. Yep. Up until I was like fifteen, and then uh, five amateur boxing. So, yeah, I, like when I was a young kid, I've, the one medal I keep. I don't know why I'm telling. This is just a weird story, but I've got one medal from when I was a kid that I keep in my side drawer. It's a third place medal. I was like, that's oh, the only really? medal I keep. I won heaps, but I was like... Why do you keep third place? Is that like a motivational thing? Well, because like um, I was so confident going into that, that I was like, I'm going to win this. This is an easy one. And I got beat, and I remember it broke me. Mm. And I was just like, it was my... Uh, like, I believed in myself more than my skill. If that was... Like, yeah. my skill didn't meet where I... As much as... And then from then on, I was like, I will never let that happen again. So my skill always has to match the uh, sense of belief. That's sick. Yeah, that is cool. I respect that. I could probably... I think you and I could do with a bit of that. Yeah, <laughs> mentality. Yeah, if we were fighters. <laughs> well, no, just in life. <laughs> fighting. Uh, um, you mentioned Olympics before. I didn't realize you fought at the Olympics. We were discussing this earlier in two thousand. So, what were you in? Like what? Late twenties? Where were you? Early twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah. That talk about like what I imagine would have been fucking awesome. Like the Olympics in Australia, two thousand. You know, like there was it seemed like a fun time. What was the experience like? Oh, it was the best. It was it was amazing. And when I got um, selected in Canberra, you had to win. And back then, you had to, before the 2000 Olympics, you had to be the Australian champion to get selected generally. Then they changed the rules and they brought the numbers down. So the only the champion in each weight division from the whole Oceanic region <coughs> would go to the Olympics. Yep. That included Australia, New Zealand, Samoa, Tonga, American Samoa, uh, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Vanuatu, and that was it. And so you had to win the tournament. Um, only one person for each division in that whole tour tournament went to the Olympics and I won the tournament. And, and got selected to go to the Olympic Games. And I'll never forget, it was down at Canberra at the AIS, which I'd spent a lot of time in previously in the Australian team for three mm. or four years. Went to the Commonwealth Games in 98, then got selected to go to the Olympics. <clears throat> and one thing was the best. I remember hugging my old man. My old man's gone there, but me and him were, you know, like Tyson, his old man, although the old man um, didn't punch me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we were super tight. Like him and his father had a great dynamic. And, yeah. and uh, he was, you know, always with me by my side. Never pushed me, never, never forced me. He was an old school guy, old farmer back in the day and just, you know, didn't box himself, but had a nose way worse than mine. So every, he looked like a boxer. Yeah, he yeah. got his head kicked a few times in footy. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, and I remember just giving him a hug, going, Dad, we, I've always we're going to the big games like that. Yeah. It was the best. Yeah, and then I won my first fight against Brazil. <clears throat> I never forget. It. it was like such a magic experience winning against this tough young kid. And we put on a good show, and I stopped him in the fourth round. And then next fight, I come up against the gold medalist, <clears throat> the eventual gold medalist, and the current world champion, three-time Olympian, Alexander the Beast Lebziak. And mm. he's like, he was the probably the biggest name at the Olympic Games. And I drew him my second fight. Lovely. And uh, you might be able to see my hand there, but I broke my hand on his head. Jesus Holy so shit I did that I punched him in the head Hit him in the second round With a peach of a right hand Hit him here like I'm not going to punch I've gone wham I hit him with a beautiful shot And he's just going 
It's like, well, I'll just piss <laughs> this guy off. <laughs> and then uh, he broke a nose real bad at the end of that round, and I dropped him at the start of round two, uh, and hit him with a beautiful hand, but a uh, right hand. But I broke it in the first round, then couldn't uh, couldn't use my right hand, so I only had one hand, which made it very difficult. But I gave him the best fight he had. The whole he went on to win the Olympic Games. Yeah, and I gave him the best fight he had by far. So after that, I was like, man, I. I can I know I can turn pro. I've hung with the hung with the best the gold medalist and the world champ with yeah. one hand and a busted nose and I'm I'm a pup in the sport and he's yeah. a veteran. He had over three hundred fights. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I, I got what it takes to go pro. But that whole Olympic experience was um was just walking into the venue, hundred thousand people, yeah. the unbelievable. The noise was unbelievable. And I remember they gave us this little zinc, they gave us green and gold zinc. Mm. And I remember going in a lot. How am I going to get on TV with my mates and family at home watching? Like, no one's going to fucking put a boxer on TV. So there's Kathy Freeman and Kieran Perkins and all the mm. superstars. So I thought, I'll take the zinc and I'll paint my face green and gold. And I rushed down to Australia with the last team to go into the village, although we're, hey, we're in alphabetical order. And then I went to the toilet quickly before we were, we were when the team got called to walk out, walk from one stadium with this big march down to the stadium. It was such an epic time. And I painted my face in the toilet and came out with a full green and gold face. <laughs> I'm going to get on TV for sure. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, where'd you, why didn't I do that? Where, you got any more zigzags? And I got on left side. <laughs> and then when, I, when the first camera came by, I was like, yeah, ran over, yeah, Perth, Western Australia. And then it got on, I didn't know whether that's it was going to, but it got on TV. So oh, it was like, oh, there's So that's yeah, awesome. it was a magic time in my life. Unbelievable. Is the, are the rumours true about the Olympic Village? I was just going to ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, doesn't condom sales or something go yeah. up? Oh, I thought you were talking about the food hall. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh, it was a pretty, I don't know, man. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything. Yeah, yeah. It was a magic time. I didn't see or hear anything. I, uh, just, yeah. I just, no, I, I had a girlfriend. My girlfriend then was now my wife. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been with the same girl for 30 years. So, uh, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of talk around that stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, food hall was good. If you, if you broke your hand, well, you did break your hand in that fight. Even if you'd beaten him, like how would you have competed for the rest of the Olympics? You just would have fucking done it, eh? Like is that uh, sort of like depending I did I broke my I broke this hand in the Commonwealth Games in the first round and then won the fight, but I had to fight another four rounds and then couldn't fight after because it was really bad. Yeah, that's what I mean, right? Like you say, from? Uh, the Olympics? Yeah. From Russia. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh damn. And then um and then so yeah, and so I, I would I don't know, I, I would have tried my best to continue, yeah, because I yeah. thought you know, we've all done it. It's what fighters do. You fight with broken hand, broken nose, broken jaw, whatever. You you, you just do it. I hurt my calf win. today riding an elliptical. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking I sat down to do a podcast, got up and went, oh, she's a bit tight. Yeah, I might have to tight. give it up for today. Pack See, up. you're still going. Man. Yeah. I told, <laughs> when I tore my ACL, I kept going like I was until uh, the third round because I was like, fuck, if I quit, that's just going to beat me up more out the back. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, kept falling over. Like, oh. Yeah, dude, that <laughs> was <laughs> fucked, Dave. Was that against <laughs> Shogun? Uh, yeah. Dude, yeah. and weren't you, and just like from memory, Memory. I know it's a while ago, but weren't you kind of winning that fight? Yeah, you, yeah. you were doing like I thought you were like on top of him, and then it. Yeah, and then you just, kept going, and then it just fucking got fucking scattered. <laughs> so end. multiple yeah. rounds with a ACL. Yeah, blown yeah, out ACL. Second and third. Oh, That'd be God. horrific. Oh, yeah, it was. Give me a broken hand all day. Yeah, and and his leg just kept nothing. collapsing, and like it was. Thinking back on it, like I should have swapped the southpaw and then like not put all the balance on there. But it was like when it was happening, I didn't even know what was going on. It just sounded like a twig snapped. And then I would step back and I just go, think people thought it was a punch, but man, Jesus Christ. Whoa. How many injuries have you had in your career? Oh, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much every. Remember James Tahuna fought with a broken arm yeah. in London? Yeah. And, but yeah, I was like, fingers, uh, complete, like, I've got, I'll show you the photo afterwards, but my ankle was facing the other, like, my foot was facing the other way. Terrific. Um, spiral fracture in the tibia. Oh, and always, uh, like, the surgeons usually mess it up, so. I came back and I found out a year later that they had put it in the wrong spot. Oh, great. And like the ACL, I was out for four years. Because yeah, that's because that's what I was interested in that. Like I four years? Was it all yeah, from longest, the ACL for yeah, that? Longest layoff in UFC history, so hopefully they get the Hall of Fame or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'd used hamstring and uh, they put it in the wrong tunnel. So I went back for my Dude. first fight and uh, the first like takedown, it just went boom after nine months. So I went back in. They were like, all right, we'll use Sorry. The, yeah, we'll use the patella. Um, and uh, they cut out my IT band, uh, and then I ended up doing my meniscus like during COVID. After that, so it was just 
Back to back to back. Do you send a stern email after they fucked that up? <laughs> <or> what? <laughs> what? I like it because, like, you know, in Australia, if it was America, you sue, right? But yeah. It was like, also, I just didn't, I just wanted to get through it. Like, the yeah. first time it happened, I was like, I'm straight back in the gym. This is easy. Nothing's going to stop me. Second time I was happening, I was like, this is a bit of a shit go. Yeah. Third time I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like ridiculous. You, know, you got all your family going. Like, when do you wrap it up? Like, is that it? Like, mm. probably call, like, call it quits. I was like, I always knew I was going to get back i just didn't think it was going to take that long that's it's a crazy amount of time to be out did it did it feel like is that the ring rust is that there uh no nah, not really not really like there, there was a couple shots that i took uh, that i took that i probably shouldn't have but it was yeah i didn't really feel it i was just amped uh, afterwards i was so excited to fight that i just wanted to fight everyone afterwards like i was like it was hard to switch off like mm. i beat the guy and then i still wanted was looking for someone to fight oh really mm. yeah like I could see myself in there afterwards, and I was like, "Oh, just go home, and, <laughs> just go home and get back out of debt." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> are, the, yeah. are the UFC good about the injury layoffs that long, or do they start to get a bit itchy themselves? Man, that's why I'll never say anything bad about the UFC because I could have, uh, like, they could have cut me, mm. and like that would have been, you know, I would have been screwed. But they kept me on, and that, that was that part of the journey. And yeah. Uh, and look, I know you're currently sitting next to your your promoter right now, but how yeah. does he compare to say like Dana White? Is it you know like what's that? What's the experience? I guess like someone like he's got more hair. <laughs> <laughs> Dana White, man. It's Dana it's White, he's a juggernaut. No, I don't yeah. mean like who's better. <laughs> <laughs> but if the, I was going to say, no. but you know what I mean? No, like I guess you it's, know the difference you know, is it's more personal. Yeah, that's like what I was I've, say. I've met Dana twice, like and we that's shook it. hands. Yeah, mm. we shook hands, but like. I've pretty much been with this guy every day, like <laughs> on the phone with him. So it's uh, it's a completely different uh, system, mm. completely different machine. Like how mm. it all works, we actually have to sell the fight with boxing. Like uh, with UFC, people are going to watch no matter what, you know. So uh, I guess it's 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 a much smaller scale. Yeah, for sure. it's a much more. And the UFC is the biggest sporting engine on the globe, mm. and the the money they have for marketing and promoting mm. <coughs> is. Um, is is oh, I have no idea, but it would be astounding. Yeah. And so <clears throat> they have uh, a massive. It's a massive company. Mm. Was you know, Green Machine Promotions isn't a massive company at all. So it's more intimate. Like most promoters, like majority of promoters <clears throat> around the world, we're not the biggest. You know, we've done a lot of big shows, a lot of stadiums, and we're hitting the ground running again. And for me, it's different. I'm learning about um, social media and plat uh, digital marketing, etc. I'm learning about that because yep. I'm 51, an old boy, and that wasn't really around when I was fighting much. Mm. Um, so there's a lot for me to learn, but uh, yeah, it's a lot more intimate, and we have to. Uh, Tyson's learning that to to be the main event and to resonate with the public, you have to be accessible to the public, and you have to be accessible to the media. Whereas the NRL, AFL, their players they don't want their players talking to the media; no, they yeah. want to control them. They just get the in the AFL machine to talk to the to the player to the to the, the manager or the coach mm. talks to the to the media or uh, a media liaison or talk to the media. They don't want the players talking to the media. Mm. So, but we have to put bums on seats, and Tyson has to do that. He's learning that. So Danny's and suggested OnlyFans, but we're just yeah, just oh, yeah slowly. Nice. We don't want to go too fast, you know. That'd get that'd get sales ticketing. <laughs> I was, I'm glad it wasn't around when I was when I was fighting because I you know would have been you mean but a pair of budgie smugglers would have gone woo. Yeah. <laughs> you buy the fight, I'll show you. Viral. Yeah, yeah. For yeah, the wrong yeah, reason. Yeah. Prove you bought the fight. <laughs> yeah, you prove you bought the fight. Show them a bit of a bit of cheek. <laughs> bit of cheek. Bit of cheek. So do you <laughs> do you um almost prefer the old days when it wasn't so much like trash talky and you didn't need to necessarily do all that sort of the social the focus on social media wasn't so great to determine fighting or is it just like well we got the front page you know chocker and i shared the front page in the national newspaper so many times it was yeah. ridiculous and, and and not just for that for roy and for other fights we had you know we, we were kind of with boxing you know back in the day we were we were um we were running pretty hot and uh you know we had the front page around the whole country and I don't know, a lot of times it was quite bizarre mm. and so now you know you, you the media is different it works in different ways and so um yeah i, I kind of i prefer the older days because yeah. the the i guess the media was I don't know, it was authentic mm. which today it seems you know you can there's so many stunts pulled and so many things that are that are contrived and, yep. and aren't authentic and genuine and it gets so much media, it's 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 bullshit. Mm. And then I find that whole social media side of things can be very toxic 
yeah can be very toxic very negative mm. um and it also can be amazing it can be uplifting and it can be beautiful so there's two sides to it depends which side you want to try and find and which side you want to look at but as far as like you know for instance today you know oh he's gonna wipe the floor with you this is the blah blah it's like why don't people just be uplifting and try and bring someone up and mm. rise them up and be cool and go mate good luck yeah. sick fight can't wait to watch it instead of being negative yeah because no one's accountable no, no one's I held know, accountable anymore yeah. you hold someone accountable they won't say shit no one's gonna come up to this guy's face and tell them what they really think <laughs> highly unlikely not, a chance. <laughs> not unless they're not unless they've just you know but even i, I crack yeah. a meth yeah. um, <laughs> even um just i think having experienced it before sort of is a bit better so like i went through it after my fight in uh in perth and that was the first time i got hit with like a lot of negativity and it's, it rocked me because I was also like, got, I was sick. I broke my ankle. I was on painkillers. So it was like, when I got all of that hate and then people messaging my wife, messaging my kid, uh, were like talking about my kid, I was like trying to meet up to fight people and stuff. But yeah. now it's like, I, I've obviously spoke with people that have dealt with that hate and like now it pumps me up. Like you, you can see it in a different light. Whereas if I hadn't experienced that before, this would be the first time I've experienced all of that on social media and it can rock you. Yeah. Like it can get to you. And I understand because that's why people are going through like online bullying and stuff because they don't know how to handle it. We're not supposed to deal with that. How do you handle it now? Pretty good. <laughs> now, it pumps me up yeah. now so I, told, I I was just telling you this before I've got a receipts folder just go on check but it's just as long as you understand that people like uh, I told you Israel like uh, I'm paraphrasing but he said whether they give you good energy or bad energy they're giving you your energy it's up to you how you use it mm. so I was like alright you're hating on me but yeah. You're still going to watch me and I was like, I'm going to use that. Like, it's going to give me a chip on my shoulder in training when I remember that you were mm. like saying that I couldn't do something. He's, uh, he seems like quite a deep thinker, is mm. he? Is he? Has he got like heaps of those lessons that he's sort of... Yeah, we go, past? yeah, we go, we've, we had, a, I got pretty close with him in camps because we were like, yeah, he used me and we bounced back and forth for a bit. It was really good. Mm. Yeah. And... um he uh, sorry you've got the you've got a couple of like businesses on the go or at least you've got yeah i mean you've got your, your yeah, half just, cast podcast yeah, just started you box uh, with the uh, partner oh, yeah, you <laughs> just, part, just partnered yeah. with you box yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and pedro promotion <laughs> <laughs> but um yes yeah, so you got the half cast podcast but then you've also got drink west with yep. ty and nathan how's yep. that going yeah, pretty cool. It was like something that just started as a joke before, you know. We mm. uh, were like, we like beers. Why don't we make a beer so mm. we're not buying other people? So it's uh, and then it just blew up fast. We did a fun uh, a GoFundMe, well, crowdfund. So we actually gave shares to the people that raised the money, and they uh, became investors. And we opened up our own brewery. We should have our, our new sports bar going in in Penrith. Uh, What's in that been called again? I saw it. Uh, Freddy's. Freddy's, yeah. Yeah, yeah I read about mad. that. Yeah, so that's, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, it would be the first sports bar in out, out west. And it's just been a cool journey. Like, uh, that that all came from as well in COVID when I was injured. I didn't know what I was doing. So I was like, man, if this was it in my fighting career, I've yeah. got nothing else going on. So yeah, I was like, I let's start doing something. So uh, we did uh, Wings Out West first because we, Ty and I uh, bought this beer. And when they dropped it off, we were looking at it like, Bro, how are we gonna sell this much beer? Like we're just fobs ordering, so we like ordered like <laughs> we just ordered this crazy amount of beer. And we're just like sweet, and then it got there. And we're like, this is way too much. So I was like, what goes with beer? We're like wings. So we opened up a wings west restaurant in COVID to sell the beer. Really? Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> bro, just two fobs, just not. And then uh, we um, and then we did an Italian restaurant. Now Ty's got a couple other restaurants out there, but. It's all happening. It's good though, right? Yeah, yeah, just like hustling and just trying to make something happen. Well, just like, I'm like, what do I like? Yeah. It's like, all right. And then, if it's like, shoot, first ask questions later. If yeah. it scares me, I sort of run at it. Like, this point. It's like, <laughs> it's like if it's something like, it puts you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. It's like, that's what I got to do. Like, that's why I've, uh, uh, that's what's been making me enjoy life and giving me a sense of purpose, being out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Love that. Do you enjoy the business side of things with Drink West? Like, yeah your hands yeah. on a uh, little bit not as much just in the last couple because of the fights yeah so it's been pretty fight busy fight schedule this last year but uh we've got a good team that is working it yeah how was that that video you did i think was promoting drink west you were out in a shed and you're all singing oh, and nathan clear was yeah, like yeah. fucking the voice of an angel <laughs> was that, yeah. how many takes was that yeah no, about a hundred like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was so, bad, it was so it? fucking yeah. horrific so that was the um 
that was actually the site that where we did the brewery. Yeah, okay. But it was, yeah, that was real hard to get through. <laughs> like, because I would just bust out like, like it was too much. Yeah. Was like, have you got a good um, voice? Um, me? Yeah. Have you not seen our Adam Shadow No. No. Oh, oh it's man. unbelievable. Nathan Cleary yeah, is yeah, tone yeah. deaf. Yeah. yeah. So He's love, horrific. He wouldn't be as bad as me. <laughs> oh, mate. Dude, honestly, he's, he'd, be, he'd be one of the worst in the country. <laughs> <laughs> it's and like the direct I inverse I of his footy. Oh. Will always love you. Oh, yeah, there you go, mate. You <laughs> shit on Nathan yeah, Cleary. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but they'll like it. That, that, that's gone, gone like, uh, we're going to make you a really good football player. We can't give you everything, right? That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, exactly. we're going to take the voice away. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You can't footy, have it all. It's not fair. Yeah. Uh, nah, sorry. Three yeah. premierships in a row. You can't yeah. sing, bro. Fuck that. <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> there was another video, and this is sort of nothing to do with business, but you put up, and I was pissing myself, but it was like you and a family member and I don't know who, I don't know if it was your old man, and he's just sitting in the back of a van on a chair. Yeah, yeah, that's wait, New Zealand. Wait, that was in New yeah. Zealand? Well, that allegedly. Was, no. well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. That was so funny. What the fuck was that? Uh, we can cut it out if it's so, there. No, it's it? all right. So Chad, um, the Chad who's with us right now as well, they were driving, they only had that car to pick me up from the airport in, and there was no seat in the back, and Dad didn't want to sit on the floor, so he just, <laughs> he just popped open his, like... It's like a fold-out chair, yeah, just yeah. in the middle of the back of a yeah. van. Oh, and yeah. I think he actually fell off of it one time, because then that chair's comfier. Dad's got very wide hips, uh, so that was comfier for him. So he started sitting in there, and Chad's just hooked it, and Dad's gone over the top. And uh, Chad, Chad was, uh, got out of the... If we can find that video online, quick. it'll be inserted. Yeah, we must insert. Yeah, insert yeah, 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 yeah. Um, fellas, we've really appreciated you coming on. So just for everyone again, uh, June twelfth, Pedro Kristevsky. Yeah, yes. I, like I like Kristevsky. I like Kristevsky. What is it actually? <laughs> no, Chris Terzievsky. <laughs> Chris Terzievsky. Forgive yeah. me. That's a. Uh, yeah. It's a look. It's not the easiest pronunciation. Yeah. No, it isn't. Say. Stan Sport pay per view. Horden Pavilion. Horden Pavilion. Pavilion. Yep. Ticket Tech. Ticket Tech. Hit the tickets are on sale right now. Right now. Right now. Hit the hit the link. Ticket Tech. But uh, yeah, it's. I mean. Also on the undercard, you got um, Alex Winwood, who is ranked number two in the WBC strawweight division, Olympian, Commonwealth Games representative, the indigenous kid on the up. He's four and zero, and we spoke about people challenging himself. Mm. He's fighting a kid called Joey Canoy from the Philippines. Joey Canoy's beaten the world champion that just won the world championship against the Mexican Soto uh, two weeks ago. Canoy's beaten him. Canoy's 24, 20, 20 and five. Winwood's four and zero. You know, like it doesn't get any better than Team that. Team underdog. You know, it's, it's just the main event and the, and the semi-main event uh, are both, from what people say, underdogs. I think both win the fights. Yeah. And I'm very confident mm. they're going to win the fights. But that's what makes this show exciting. This bloke's taking no, cutting no corners. And um, it's pretty radical and I can't wait to see him. And I can't wait to see his hand raised in victory and everyone going far out. This guy ain't Fuck playing yeah. around. We want to watch the next one. We are brought to you by the biggest and best rosé in the goddamn country. That is Big Day Rosé, and we've got the competition that is running as a celebration of the fact that you can get Big Day Rosé at Shorty's Golf Course. It's the only place you can get it outside of hellosport.shop. But for anyone who buys a case or a six-pack of Big Day Rosé in the month of April, we're picking two of you motherfuckers, two winners, to play with Eddie and I. Separate days, you and three of your mates. So... Pick one winner from over here, pick another winner from over here. This guy can get three of his mates, and this guy can get three of his mates, or her mates. And what happens? We'll play golf, we'll get on the piss, we'll have a feed, we'll have a giggle, we'll have a yarn, we'll pick you up in a limo, but only if you're on the way. And if you're not on the way, we'll pick you up from check, check a checkpoint. And it's going to be a lot of fucking fun. We'll sit in the back of the limo, we'll drink Fanta, it'll be hilarious. That is Hellosport. Hellosport.shop. Month of April, it will be drawn in the start of May. How's put the chop? I actually realised I forgot a couple of questions. If you don't mind, just quickly, I want your thoughts on Tim Zhu uh, the other week. Would you, was that a fight that should have been stopped because of that, like that cut? I know there's people that sort of saying that. Do we like what's what's your thoughts on the way that goes? Is that something that should have happened? I wasn't there, but I'm I, I, I'm if the referee, what I'm told, did come over to the corner and ask the corner, can you stop the bleeding? which I think he did, and the manager was in the corner and the trainer's in the corner and the cut man's in the corner and they said yes, then they're liable for what happened. Yeah. The cut man was completely and utterly out of his depth. That's a fact. That's yeah. a fact. They don't want to say anything negative about the bloke. He just yeah. 
was out of his depth. He couldn't do that. Mm. That cut, I've spoken of many experienced cut men, that cut could have and should have been stemmed. Would have been stopped. But it just it didn't get any better the whole way through. Then you no. see the guy fumbling through it because he's just and he had the bits, had these like you may as well put a band aid on it. Yeah. Right. Because he just is is inexperienced. Yeah. Very simple. So, you know, hopefully Tim learns from that. But, you know, Tim's a warrior. Mm. Yeah. And you know, and, 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 and in defence to Fandora, Fandora had a badly broken nose from the first round and couldn't breathe because he was swallowing so much blood. I know what that feels like. It's very difficult to breathe. So when your engine comes down because you can't get oxygen in, it's very difficult. Had a bad cut in his mouth as well. So both guys were dealing with a lot of adversity during the fight and both blokes displayed their warrior spirit. Have you ever seen such, like... Uh a disparity between like fighters before like that it felt just it felt bizarre to see the size of the fucking fundora and then tim is that have you ever seen that i thought a guy was um six foot five but it wasn't the same there was probably about six inches difference between that and it looked so different because of he's so skinny yeah yes Fandora's so skinny mm. um because he's you know not, not a very heavy guy but yeah mate you know it was what it was. He, uh. he, he, he did what he had to do and he, and, he, and, he, and he boxed beautifully. And, you know, Tim will come back bigger and bigger and better and stronger than ever. He but, you know, I love watching Tim too. He's a, he's, yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's a, he's a warrior. We, um, we were looking on your Instagram earlier and Chalk was in uh, a photo, I think, when we was announcing the fight there. Are you guys mates now? Like, is that the – what's the – <laughs> What's the go? You bro there? down now? Or? Yeah, you guys cool? <laughs> got a lot of love for Chalk. He's got a lot of love for me. You know, we um, – we, we, Dominated the headlines for 15 years in boxing, yeah. and we both, you know, did very well. Made each other, you know, uh, uh, made each other's careers so much more fulfilling uh, financially. And we're prize fighters. That's yeah. what you do. You want to fight for the biggest prize, but also um, the amount of interest that was around what we're doing at that time was pretty wild. And I've always had a lot of love and respect for Chuck. I've always been his biggest biggest advocate. Although mm. I'm not a wood duck and just going to sit there and cop shit he says. <laughs> and, um, but I, you know, he, he's an incredible fighter, incredible athlete, and a, and a, and a super, like, for instance, he came down and supported me and Tyson and mm. supported something that I'm doing. Yeah, I asked a lot of guys come down, they didn't show. Mm. Chuck comes down. Mm. That shows the essence of the man. Yeah, right. Yep. So, um, yeah, no, we, and we, we've never. People ask me, is, it, is it, oh, you guys just mates off camera? Like, that annoys me because you're basically telling me I'm a liar mm. yeah. and you're attacking my integrity by asking me that question. Mm. Mm. I couldn't act. Yeah, I'd, I'd need an Oscar if I could act like that. <laughs> but um, you know, the, only dip, the, the, the real thing is our, our rivalry will never be – it'll always be there because it's authentic. Mm. Chuck will go to his grave saying he's a better fighter than me and I'll go to my grave <laughs> saying I am. And that's it. And that's why the rivalry will always stay and it's real. But yeah. there's a lot of love and respect. And you won all. So there you go. One apiece, yeah. yeah. You know, if uh, if he doesn't um, if he doesn't watch what he's saying, one day he might give a cheek. It might be, nah, just joking. We're done. We're too old. Sort of a singing competition, mate. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Beat and one, nice, yeah. No, one more, robbery. one more out of curiosity: Does Sonny Bill and and Gal do that ever come close to getting signed off on or nah? Yeah, yeah, it did got real close. It won't happen now. Mm. You know, no, Gail's, Gail's too late. retired from boxing and, yeah. you know, I think it's a smart move to Gail, mate. <laughs> he mm. said today um, if I needed any, any help with the fight, I was like, yeah, just sparring. He said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gail's, a, Gail's an old war horse, mate. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was very close to happening. It would have been a great fight. It would have been really interesting to see those two boys throw down. Yeah. Gail's, um, you know, Tony Bill's a gentleman. And he's, uh, you know, again, he came to, to support Tyson as well. And, you know, they, they, they're both... I think they both um, realise that it's it's past now. Yeah. And it was there for a while. But yeah, it would have been a really interesting fight. Um, that would have been good. I don't know which way it would have gone because you can never count Gal out because he's just a warrior and suddenly he's got that power and that speed and that athleticism. Yeah. It would have been exciting. Parramatta fan? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And Penrith fan? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. How do you how do you see your Parramatta like you we're manly fans over here, you beat us the other day and obviously like we're fucking dirty on it, but like are you, do you follow the club closely in there? Or I used you? to. So I've trained at the club for five years. My strength and condition team, Hayden Knowles and Craig Catterick, mm. were the same guys that did the Parramatta area. So I trained at the club for five years. So that was why I'd go and train. And uh, so I got to know the club real well and got to know the guys really well. It was from 2005 to 2010. So five or six years there. So I was really close to the game and, and Sticky and uh, um, uh, Belliac uh, invited me into the... Uh, Craig Bellamy and, and Ricky Stewart invited myself into the camp. 2000 and, and Angela Hodder in 2010, 2011, the origin camp. So I was around the game a lot and they used mm. to come watch my training sessions and sparring. So I was really involved with the game. And since I moved back home to Perth, I haven't been as involved, involved anywhere near as much. Yeah. Um, so I keep a, I loosely keep an eye on what's going on. Like I'm not a, 
I watch surfing and fishing and, and boxing. Yeah. yeah YouTube right. and that's all. I don't watch TV. <laughs> and that's all, yeah, I listen to music and podcasts. Uh, and that's about it. You know, I've tuned out of society to a degree. Oh, that's yeah. nice. And you're a Penrith man. Mainly beat you on the weekend. Yeah, I saw that. I yeah. See that. Just, no, no. It that just was it. That's, that's just a comment. No. Yeah, 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 sorry. Just we a statement of finish. We've got plenty of time left in the year. Just a statement of fact. That's all. That was it. So let's finish on that. Just a statement of fact. We'll just wrap it up there. Thanks, yeah, boys. No, no, no. beat you. No, thanks, boys. <laughs> thanks for coming in, fellas. Really thanks, nice to chat. Really nice to meet you both. Appreciate it. Love you, boys. Cheers. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>